Yesterday was BBD, Ross Miriam, and Peter Ingram. The day before was Matthew Dilks, Edgar Magayesh, and of course, Tarek Patel. And today is actually just a little bit of a lengthier one with the, uh, someone I consider to be a pretty good friend after all these years in Jim Davis. Jim, always a lot of fun to sit down and talk to. The former players champion, of course, on the SCG tour. We talked about the London Mulligan rule, open deck list. Uh, and actually, my favorite part of the conversation is the return of the old school PTQ format that Jim and I have had so much success in over the course of our careers. And if we like it coming back because we're old and set in our ways or if it's actually a good thing. And honestly, I'm still not sure. But we'll let you decide as you listen to this right now. I love you. All right, it's day two, which you are in. Yes. Is your record good? I'm X and three. Okay, that's good. And you haven't lost today, Yes. Right? I had a, a weird day yesterday where I felt like my deck was awesome and I played great and I was just X and three. Uh, Jim Davis, by the way, former Players' Champion, hopefully qualifying for this year's Players' Championship. We'll see. A little behind at the moment. A little bit. I've been basically in 17th place all year. Can't, <laughs> can't, get, that, can't get that second bye, you know? So, uh, yeah, we're floating, we're floating around, you know? If I win this, do all the envy. We'll are, you gonna go, are you going to um, Syracuse or Louisville? Definitely Syracuse, Louisville's a maybe. Okay. And then obviously Rich, or Roanoke, obviously. Of course. Yeah, you're going to that. Okay. Uh, so you're X and three yesterday. You're X and three now. So that means you are eight and three? Yes. With Rule Aggro. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about this deck. So on Thursday, I played in the Fandom Legends tournament. Super awesome, like, arena tournament uh, series, like 16 players every week on Thursday. And I played Abe Stein's Big Red deck. I didn't really have time to like test too much. I was streaming all day Wednesday. It's like, that deck looks cool. I'll play that. And it sucks. Abe's great. I think the deck is not necessarily bad in a vacuum, but in the, the format as it is, you can't be playing the card treasure map. You can't be dirtling around in the early turns. You need to either get ahead and stay ahead or have some sort of big late game plan. And what I did like was the Red Planeswalkers were really, really good. Uh, the new Chandra's awesome, the new Sarkin's awesome, but they're very Red Planeswalkers in that you, you want to play them when you are offensively like, attacking and getting ahead because they're really good when you're ahead. Okay. But if Chandra's damage ability is relevant, removing it's just like insane. Sure. You, just can't, you just can't attack it. Yep. You know, and then Sarkin, same thing. And early Sarkin just, is so much fresher. So you can't play them like Vivian Reed. You need to play them more like, you know, other Chandra or just more aggressive things. So casting them early and, and often was great. Uh, Lana Ruffs is great. Most of the Gruel decks have been either like Steel Leaf Champion decks splashing red or Chain Roller decks splashing green. And so they either can't play the Red Planeswalkers or can't play Lana Ruff, and I want to be both. So playing Lana Ruff, Paradise Druid also helped a lot because the mana base isn't perfect with only eight dual lands. Your sources for green on one and then double red on turn three or four is a little light, and Paradise Druid helps that a lot because that's for either color. Okay. Um, Planeswalkers were great. The Domri is pretty good too. Uh, if you're a Domri, it's not a card you can play a lot of, I don't think. Yep. But it makes Legion War Boss really good, pumps the tokens up. Okay. Um, Uncounter Vote is nice, Extra Mana is nice, the removal is nice. It's just like a very nice package for three mana, it does a lot of little things well. So, deck seems great. I'm really, really happy with it. Good matchups, bad matchups. It's really good against Nexus. It's against any deck that can't remove Legion War Boss. I think it's fine against the aggro decks. I think it's not great against Esper Control. I played against Esper twice yesterday. Games are weird where like I mulligan a few times, feel like I played good. It was like just a little bit short each game. So it's definitely winnable, but it's it's tough. Um, but for the most part, I think decks that are not killing your War Bosses are great. Decks that fall behind are great. Um, like the new Bant deck. People are playing um, Batman Rangy, yeah. kind of flashy like, deck. They just yeah. have no removal at all. Yep. Each war boss all over them. I just played against uh, a mono green deck, like splashing blue. War boss can't kill it. Yep. You know, Sarkin, which is insane. Um, for the most part, most of your matchups are reasonable to good, and even the bad ones seem fine because against Esper, you still have eight Planeswalkers. You still have, you know, Phoenix and a reasonable curve and Spellbreaker and stuff, and you can just kill them. So. Dex seems pretty sweet. I'm, I'm very happy with it overall. I don't really see like a major, major hole in it. So I'm happy. Okay. Well, if you're happy, that's good. Yeah. Right? That's a step in the right direction. I know that Sarkin card is actually pretty good. I think yeah. like not enough talk about that. No one's not, no one's really sure what five drop to play. There's Siege Gang Commander, there's Sarkin Hellkite. Sarkin seems pretty busted. Oh, yeah. Like when with other Planeswalkers too, like I had a game on uh, Arena a day or two ago where I had 
Dom Chandra and Sark in attack for 15. Yeah, sure. You know, just like, just, just, just like silly games, you yeah. know, like, and um, the ability to either A, play and it comes in play with the planeswalker already in play and attack, or yeah. B, just like make a dragon and attack for a million the next turn, it's just, it's just really, really awesome. And, and the passive is good too. Like, there's a lot of X ones in the format, you know, like mono red and mono white. Even just random like two one branch walkers and lantern rolls, where the passive like matters. You can play Sark and make a dragon. It's hard than actually attacking. Yep. So Sark is just awesome. It's really really good. How many playing? Playing two. Okay. I wish I could be playing two point five Sarkins and two point five Chandra. Sure, I've been there. Yeah, like I I played three Sarkin, two Chandra for a bit on Arena. I'm playing the opposite today because Chandra is so good, and I wanted to cut a land also. So only two Sarkins. Maybe it should be three, but. We just gotta get you a Chandra Sarkin split card. Exactly. That's all. Yeah. And then, they're, and then, you're, yeah, then you're like ready to roll. Yeah. Uh, you've been on vacation, just kind of not playing Magic a ton, kind of recently, just kind of re resetting ish. Yep. Me and Nicole yeah. actually played on the cruise. Oh, really? Yeah, we were hanging out in the, the lounge, playing a little bit, because Nicole hasn't played Standard much in okay. the last like few years. Okay. She's playing Modern mostly, and she's going to Syracuse. Okay. And um, she's going to qualify for the Invitational by going to Syracuse. She needs two more points. Okay. So cool. we're playing that too. So we were kind of like catching up on Standard a bit. That was fun. Let's play a little bit. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Playing Magic on a cruise. How long was the cruise? On oh, 10 days. Dude, that's long. Where'd you go? Let's go. Uh, it was uh, Bermuda, uh, Bahamas, Florida home. Okay. Do you like cruises? Yeah. They're the bottom. They, okay. are, they are so awesome. It's like not for me, just being on the water. I'm not a big water fan. Have you so. been on a cruise? I, I did a cruise last year in January. Okay. Went to... Bahamas. It was like one of those. I can't think of the cruise company. Royal Caribbean. No. Yeah, it's like a three-day Royal Caribbean cruise, like from Miami to like some island they own, then to Nassau and then back. Right. Sure. Yeah, it's just like something about just like being on the water the entire time. I don't know. My biggest gripe with it, because like I can't swim, so water's not that appealing to me. But also, it's just um, my biggest gripe is the food kind of sucks. In my experience, the food has been like kind of bad. It's pretty good. I don't but know. maybe you're going on better cruises. I mean, maybe ten day cruises are better than like two and a half day cruises. Yeah, I think that. Do you are you uncomfortable on the boat? Do you feel like queasy at all, or like? Is I don't it... get like seasick or anything. Okay. So that doesn't really bother me. I guess I'm always just kind of like I'd rather just be on land at a hotel. It's like the first day or two of the cruise for me, I'm a little a little woozy, kind of like getting used to it. But okay. after a day or two, you kind of like ease into it. You're much more comfortable. But. I don't know. I just think it's great. The ability to be completely unplugged. Your phone doesn't even work. You are just, I do like that. You are just in this place where there's a whole bunch of cool shit to do. And there's food everywhere. And everything's done for you. And you're completely absent of responsibility. Yeah. And it's like, even when you're in a hotel, there's still phone calls. There's still this and that going on. Whatever it is, you yeah. know. And the cruise is just like an exclusion from that. And like, the, the value is pretty good too. I mean, like what you're paying for it, you know, for it's essentially cool, a hotel cheap, yeah. and where you're going and food and everything is good. So I, I love cruises. Nicole and I are actually discussing getting married in a cruise. Nice. This guy, his name is Sparky. Sparky? Uh, Sparky, we were on the, the tender. It's like the small boat that takes you to the private island. Yep. And we were talking to him and he said that his uh, his son got married in a cruise. Okay. And he had like paid for it. Okay. And like, instead of spending 20 grand on a wedding, you just like invite 30, 40 friends and family get like inside staterooms for everyone okay. you get like a package deal you get like a suite for booking it yourself okay and then like you just go on a cruise with all your friends and family for seven days sure. and like that's much better than me than like you know having to plan a giant oh twenty thousand dollars for four hours of you know like so we're discussing that it could be pretty cool i know that but, um, if and when i ever get married i don't want to have a big wedding it is right. just it's, like that is my nightmare right absolutely that is like, my fucking nightmare it's like oh, four thousand dollars worth of flowers nope yeah, no, cool. all of it. All like so. The best weddings I've been to have been weddings like I. So I just went to my best friend's high school. Got married in Jamaica, and so I was in Jamaica two weeks ago mm -hmm. for four days, Wednesday to Sunday. That was great. We did like it. It was a uh, all, all inclusive. My first time ever doing one of those. Like kind of cool. like a cruise. Yeah. Right. Um, and it was him, and then his mom, dad, sister, brother, and then sister's girlfriend, mm -hmm. and then on his wife's side, Anna. It was. Hit her sister, brother, mom, dad, grandpa, family friend, and then I was a family friend. So there were 14 of us. That's awesome. And it was just like, what's the wedding going to be like? And they're like, it's going to be a 20 minute like ceremony. Right, yeah. Just... And then we're going to do appetizers and then go to the restaurant and then they're going to do a bonfire and we're going to dance and get drunk. And I'm like, great. Yeah. I'm like, do we have responsibilities like any of the other days? Like, we have to do a rehearsal yeah. that was 25 minutes. And he's like, do whatever else you want. And I'm like, Oh my God! Yes, he's like, yeah. we don't want people to feel like they're obligated to have to do X and Y right. and wear this sort of things. Like, uh, when we got married, there were just like no shoes. Like, 
like don't wear your shoes mm -hmm. you know so we had to i had to get like a pair of uh like a, a pair of pants and shirts that i know his wife wanted us to wear so everyone wore that mm -hmm. but they were just like yeah no shoes like it's super low-key all this other stuff and i'm like okay great yeah you that's know? that's what i want i, I don't I, want like the like what like the shit you see in movies yeah the, oh, the pop and circumstance of a wedding is just it's just insane to me and nicole and nicole too you know usually it's like the the girls kind of more like oh, I wanna have this, this, and that. Yeah. nicole's like all I care about is just food and friends, you know, like Nicole's like, I want a taco bar. Yeah. That's, that's Nicole's desire. Like it's going to be a taco bar. And my family and friends got to be there. That's basically it. It's just a big fucking party. I don't want it to be a $30,000 party. Right. Yeah. It can be a super cheap, fun party. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so they had this past, uh, I guess last weekend, Mythic Championship 2 in London. You were on the cruise. I wasn't there. Whatever. But um, they had the London Mulligan. I'm sure you've played with this some. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts? Um... It seems like for standard and limited, it's great. Okay. Cool, there's no problem at all. It's only really discussable in formats where there's major like two card interactions. And I think it's fine. I like it. I think it's good overall. And we're probably at the point where obviously everyone likes to scream and cry about everything. Oh my God, this is gonna break everything. This is so stupid. You know, but I, I think it's at the point where it's good enough where if we have to ban one or two extra cards because of it, I'm cool with it. Okay. You know, I think it, it plays well. It feels pretty good. Anything that goes to the goal of reducing non-games and magic is a good thing. Okay. You know, and yeah, I'm for it. Uh, this Neoform deck, have you seen this? Yes, only briefly. I haven't played it yet. Okay. I'm, playing, I'm playing on stream this week probably. Okay. Uh, I mean, again, if this is the kind of thing that comes out of a London Mulligan, just ban the stupid card, whatever. Sure. You know, like... I don't even think the deck is good. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a hokey, like, all-in, like, deck I would play on stream. Like, ha, 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 I went 2-3 with this deck, you know. But and people are winning with it, so... To me, it, to me, it feels very, um... It feels very, I get to take a screenshot when everything goes right. But, like, where's the screenshot when you got thought seized? Right. I don't see that one. It's like when a poker player is like, I won. Right. I keep winning. It's like, well, what about all the losses? It's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Losses? Yeah. I don't lose. Yeah, I... I so I played this one tournament. Yeah, I won. It yeah. was great. Yeah, it never that never happens where it's yeah. like I don't know. My opponent played Graph Trigger's Gauge and my deck ceased to function. No, you know. So I, I have a, like obviously their best draws are really good, but you can say the same thing about the stupid Gorio's Vengeance deck. Sure. You know, I, that one uses the graveyard. This one doesn't. But I'm not bu I'm not buying into the screenshot hype. Yeah, right I definitely want to try it. That's yeah. the kind of deck where you just need to like play through a league, and I think one league would be a pretty quick. Uh, feeling of if it's actually working or not yeah and, and again and if, if it's too too good ban it whatever it's modern you know like we're used to that yeah i agree uh this pro tour also had open deck list mm -hmm. where they gave you the exact starting 60 and then they listed off the sideboard cards but didn't say how many there were of each yeah. one uh what do you think about that i'm not sure i mean the the pragmatic side of me you know wants coverage to be better and wants accessibility to the people who are watching and stuff and want to make the best viewing experience so in, in that regard, I think it's great. You know, having the, all the cardboard live stuff we're having now, you can see the whole deck list. It's really, really cool, really, really good for coverage. Being able to export the deck that I see Ross Merriam playing as he's playing it in his feature match to Arena and start playing it immediately is really, really cool. Yep. But the competitive side of me is like, why even brew at that point? You know, a lot of the value of bringing a, a kind of a brew that might be 5% weaker than everything else in the format is that you can use your skill and knowledge to up that and then you also compound that with your opponent's lack of familiarity with your deck. You know, where they don't know if you're playing X counter spell or Y counter spell. What kind of tutor targets you have in your, your uh, not pod deck, but whatever, you know. And that part of magic of A, having that edge and B, trying to figure out what your opponent could possibly have in scenarios is really, really fun. And does kind of sink take that away um i don't know i'm conflicted because half of me is a really competitive magic player and half of me is you know into growing the game and branding and all that stuff too so it's it's a really hard question like, I just don't... imagine if you're playing this open right now and like the next match you play in round 12 boom you sit across from an opponent you guys exchange deck lists yeah i mean good bad different i think it definitely favors better players you know it does if i never heard my opponent's deck I can craft a much easier plan. I feel like me personally, a leak in my game is that I play badly when weird things happen. I always lose the Illy Cassis. Okay, sure. He's always has some weird card that I didn't think of and he beats me with it, you know? Okay. I always play badly against the pod decks because they would draw their random one ofs that I wasn't expecting and lose to it. So I think that it would probably be an advantage for me with deck lists. But even then, like, 
it's kind of cool that I lose the Elegacies because he had one Zealous Conscripts and a Cavern of Souls and stole my Nahiri and then got his own Emrakul with it. Or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, like, sure, whatever weird thing that happens. Yeah, like, that, that's a fun part of Magic, too. I'm really not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm really conflicted on it. Yeah, it's an interesting question. I don't know if it was successful or unsuccessful at the Mythic Championship this uh, this past weekend. Um, I've been talking to people and just kind of getting some feedback and, like, you know, maybe we incorporate it in something that we're doing here, like the Invitational or something mm -hmm. like that. But I've also kind of think, I I brought this up to Brian, or Brian Duin, yesterday, but I was like, what if all tournaments were just open and then, like, the closed tournaments with no deck list are the ones that happen less frequently and that are interesting. So, you know, like, all the opens, you sit across from your opponent, you trade deck list, Invitationals, whatever, and then, like, the Players' Championship, it's all closed. The Stuff problem like is, like, there's so much coverage for that event. You know, like, it, the, problem, the, the basic problem is, like, I could just text Nicole and be like, hey, what's BBD playing? You, wa you watched him last time, you're watching the coverage. If there's some way to like kind of close everybody off, but you're right, it's hard to do that for a bigger event. So maybe for a smaller event, you could do that. To have some way where like, all right, everyone puts their phones over here, you're cut off. Yep. You're here for four hours, you're playing the tournament, you're not able to access the outside world. Yep. You can play now, no, no deck lists or whatever. You know, so maybe that could be done. It's kind of cool. For the PC, we had deck lists, right? I think it was round one we did and the rest we did. I'm like pretty sure, yes. Yeah. Because the last one we did was like three years ago, so I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'm yeah. pretty sure, yes. Yeah, I think it was round one, no deck list, and then for the rest of the tournament we had deck lists. Yeah. Um, yeah, if there was a way to do it where there wasn't deck list, I think that's cool. And then I guess maybe having it so it's a once in a while thing, so people feel extra incentivized to like be sneaky and try and like get them, you know? Mm -hmm. um, like, you know, people play one sensor in their control deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and stuff yeah. like that. like. That's not going to happen with, with, with Equus out in the open. I guess maybe, maybe it will. That's, that's a bad example. But I don't know. I think it's probably too hard to do in a big tournament. But in a smaller event, maybe it could be possible. It's cool. What do you think about War of the Spark? It's great. Yeah? Yeah, I think that the Planeswalker design is awesome. I'm getting really, really sick of, like, the generic five-mana, like, Teferi Vivian Planeswalker. Where plus, it's like, plus minus. Yeah, yeah, plus one draw, minus three kill, yeah. minus eight win. Yeah. Like, goes six loyalty. And, like, that feeling of you're a little bit behind and they play it, and you're just like, I just can't attack this thing right now. Like, I'm just, I'm so behind. I just sit here and watch them draw a card every turn. There's no, like, tension. There's no, like, the gameplay pattern just sucks. I'm just like, all right, draw a card, draw a card, draw a card, you know? So I'm happy they're moving away from that. Oh, it is funny that Bolas is, like, literally just that. But just yeah. hard. He's hard to cast. You know, he, is, he is hard to cast in five mana and, you know, has some other powerful abilities, too. Right. But yeah. yeah, but the fact that, like, the new Planeswalkers are much more interesting you know they're more don't just put it in your deck you know yeah. domri's in my deck for a reason you know i'm, I'm gonna play it early it ramps me not every deck wants domri yep. you know and so on and so forth sarkin's kind of similar and the designs of the point walkers and the side is really cool like cards like narset the smaller teferi things you don't want all the time maybe like the cute little one or two of like it's just cool there's a lot of cards that are kind of have me excited to build around i spent 16 hours on wednesday streaming okay. i played 10 different decks Okay. And I showed like a crazy brew stream, and I feel like I've barely touched the set. There's so many things I want to try. I haven't got to do yet. So the set's really cool. It's powerful. A lot of interesting cards. A lot of cool stuff going on. It seems like a, a huge hit overall. And the whole like storyline thing is cool. Storyline you know, is great. Yeah, it's it's very Avengers esque. I keep like referencing like you know Nicol Bolas and Thanos in my videos and my articles and stuff. And and it's. It comes at a good time because everyone's so hyped about that. Yep. Uh, but it's cool. It makes me actually care about the characters a little more. I kind of want to know what's going on. I'm like, oh, you know, Liliana did what now? This is kind of cool. I didn't know she was into this or whatever it is. And they've done a good job spoiling it as well. They, I know when they released the previews, I had a preview card, and they were very specific. They're like, you must release your card on this day. specific day yep. because it's coming out in waves, and we can't spoil the story at the end. Yep. So that was really, really cool. Um, Plus, just a home run across the board. Yeah, I think they did a really nice job with this one. The set yeah. seems really, really good. Uh, I'm looking forward to like kind of playing it. I have a, I have a PTQ in two weeks. Old school PTQ? Yeah, we yeah. Have, we have one on Long Island like next month. I'm so stoked. Yeah, I have. Um, it's a back to. So this coming weekend, I'm out of town, and then in two weeks there's one on Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. One in Tacoma, which is like 45 minutes from my house, and then one in Spokane, which is three and a half hours. And so I'm gonna be playing in both of those, like Sweet. like I'm 24 again or whatever. Oh uh, yeah, I'm I'm pumped this long time. I I do I love I love a one slaughter yeah. more than life itself. Oh for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why, but I just the RP the PPTQ RPTQ system. Even though I was qualified for all the RPTQs, something about it just like did not resonate with me. But something about just playing an old school one slaughter, everyone like X. X people are going to be mad. One person's going to be happy. <laughs> that one person has been me 14 times. It's just like, that's fine. Yeah. It's totally fine. 
Yeah, it's just knowing that you're going to start your day, eat breakfast, walk into a room, and by dinner time, you either have a slot, or you own the slot. Yeah. That's it. Uh, yep. Like PPDQs were like, I'm going to play with FNM, and I literally have to win the tournament or I feel bad. And then once I win, I haven't actually gotten anything. Yeah. I have to schedule another thing for another week. It's just like, ugh. I just can never play in them. I mean, my life's already busy anyway, but PPTQs were just not even an option. I remember I played in one that was like, I don't know, 13 or 14 people, was mega soft, right. lost in the top eight, and I'm like, this was a total waste of a fucking right. day. Right, you feel awful. Yeah, and I never felt that way about playing in a PTQ, mm. but I felt that way about playing in a PPTQ, like, quite a bit. Because you have to win. Yeah. If you don't win, it's a total failure. But you have to win a PTQ, too. But, but like, at least, you know, you had your shot. You know, you played in your PTQ, and, like, you knew you were alive for it, and you, you did whatever. Whatever happened, happened, and now you lost. Next week, I'll play again. Sure. You know, the, but the PPTQ is just like, there's not even, like, a prize at the end. It's like, you know, it doesn't like, feel like It doesn't feel like I won something if I won it. Right. Especially in a PPTQ, I, I feel like if I don't win it, I'm just like, wow, that's embarrassing. Right. With a PTQ, it's like, I don't know, this is hard. Yeah. And if I won it, like, that was an accomplishment. Where a PPTQ, I have this weird expectation of, if I do not win this, I'm going to want to jump off a bridge. Which right. Isn't the way I should probably feel, but it's the way that no, I but, would feel. But it is though, because you're you're just playing the small event you wouldn't usually play, and like you just literally have to win. There's no other, you know. And they're usually they are usually soft. They're usually they feel like an F and M. Like you can't win this F and M. You can't play the tournament you want to play. Yeah. You know, like yeah. And also in the old school PTQ is like you just get to watch your friend win, or you, someone's gonna win. Someone's gonna be really happy, and you get to kind of be, be there for that too. Yeah. You know, like and like watching your friends in top eight is really cool, or someone usually wins. You know, you're. You have the car ride home with the winner in the back, like it feels awesome. So it's cool. I'm, I'm very, I'm very excited, weirdly, to play these. You know, like, am I gonna test? I don't know. Like, I don't have that much time, whatever, but I'm gonna go to both of them. And it'll feel, I think it's gonna feel like pretty good yeah, to I'm, play in them again. I'm hyped. Like, the one I played in in Grand Prix Oakland that I top eighted, where it was like, you get to 5 0 to make top eight, yeah, to go undefeated, and then, like, you know, you play the top eight. It felt like kind of like an old school PTQ. Yeah. Like, I made the top eight, lost in the quarterfinals, and I was like pretty pissed when I lost. And then Sperling won that one, and that one got him to his PT sure, yeah. runner up, or this MC runner up in London. Yeah. Like, you know, something about that just felt like this is what I'm used to. Yeah. You know, I don't even know if like that's the best system. It's just the system I'm used to. That's the hard part is trying to separate is this just what I'm used to doing because I've done it for so long? Or yeah. Is this actually better? Yep. You know, and I, I think it is just actually actively better. You know? I think it's better than the PPTQ, RPTQ system. Sure. I sure. will say that. I don't know if it's the best thing, but I just don't know who really enjoyed that system for what it's worth. I don't think anybody. And it's funny because I think it was actually much easier to qualify in that system. I think it was easier too. Because the, the PPTQs were always very soft. And then a lot of the better players didn't even want to go to them. So like, so I played, I actually played more RPTQs than I played PPTQs probably. Same. And most of them were very soft. And like, they were Northeast RPTQs. Like, that's an area where like, winning a PTQ in the Northeast back 10 years ago was like a big deal damn man yeah. you know and these rpdqs like the first one i played in was in boston ish area me and pete ingram went and i think adam snook and like i think chase kovac or something was there and they, that was it everyone else there had no idea who they were maybe they're good maybe they're bad i don't know but sure. like when there's only four semi-name players in your entire rpdq when your old pdqs were like you can rattle off 30 or 40 I mean, names. Once you, you look know? at the tables at like round five or six in an old PTQ, old PTQ you're like, right. all right, it's on. Yeah, yeah, it was murderers row. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's fucking on right, right. now. Yeah. yeah. I missed that. I missed that. For a sure. Lot. Yeah. There was just, there was, back in the days of like when I was in college, like looking at the top eight, you would look at the top eight of the PTQs to see who made it. Right. Right. You'd be like, okay, like this person's really good. This person's really good. What's their deck so I can play it in this like next event, stuff right. like that. It was just never, I didn't look at PPTQ results or RPTQ results. I didn't care. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, me, me and Pat were, were uh, out last night discussing this, too. Like, there was also this feeling of this, like, you go to PTQ, these are the grinders from your area, I'm from Long Island, you know, you're from Jersey, you're from New York or whatever, you're dead. Yeah. You're coming in here and you're dead. And yep. Me and my car from Long Island are coming in, we're going to put three of us in top eight, and one of us is going to win, and you guys are dead. Yeah. You know, and that, that kind of, like, really competitive, like, cutthroat feeling... You just don't get that. You no, you don't. Get, I don't even know yeah. if you get that that much even anymore. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe yeah. that's a relic of a, a different time. Yeah. But like, I just miss that. Like I was saying to Pat, like if I could like bottle that feeling and buy it, yeah, I would. 
Oh yeah. I would chug on it. I, I used to love walking to like the like the Chicago PTQs from Indy mm. or whatever, or like the Columbus ones and just, you know, with my car people. And it's like, well, one of us is winning, so fuck all you people. Yeah. Like that's what's happening. Right. We're going to Louisville, which was a soccer PTQ. Mm. That always just like felt really good. It's just like, yep, taking this. We're going to go to the next one. Going to run the victory lap, which is me. Yeah. I qualified to hang out with all my friends. Hope one of them qualifies. Like, yeah. yeah that was, that was fun. Or like, and it was also the, the verse too, because like, when I was when I was in college, there was a really good group of players in Iowa: Brandon Shield, Matt Hanson, Steve Locke, who mm-hmm. started playing Magic and has won two Grand Prix, um, and like a couple other people in that area. And it was just like, ah, oh, man, the Iowans are here. This is gonna be like kind of hard because <laughs> like you don't expect Iowa to be good at Magic, but there were like three or four really good players from Iowa. And it's like, ah, oh, man, they're here. You can play against one of them round five, round six, like every time, yeah. and one of them would always top eight. And yeah, they would eventually get all their qualifications and like. Nebraska or like one of the big events but yeah they'd all be qualified for the pro tour every time so I hope it kind of resurfaces like that but you know the game's different 10 years later right it's probably because there wasn't really the open series back then, like a thing like that yeah where I feel like now everyone kind of knows each other because we all see each other every weekend yeah it's not necessarily regional where it used to be like the New York guys go to the Boston BTQ and we don't see them around. yep you know like they're like that Boston crew we kind of we know who they are but we're like eh who you know we're coming onto your turf now, you know, and it, it's not, not a thing where we're always all in the same place every weekend. That might be part of it. I always liked, too, where, like, you didn't know if they were going to come. Sure. It was until I like, walked through the door and you're like, all right, like, these yeah. guys are here. This Boston guys just, are here. Let's go. This just got, like, a little bit harder, yeah. you know? Like let's, with the, let's rumble. Yeah, like, when the relevant people, like, walk through the door, you're like, all right, dope. Like, this just got a little more difficult or, like, this sucks that it got more difficult, whatever. Yeah. I always did remember that, too, when, you know, random people walk through the door. I'm like, ooh, all right, here we yeah. go. Yeah. So I'm curious what it's going to be like um, with the return to this, but I am excited for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm stoked. stoked. Um, favorite card or favorite card or um, what you think the best card is from War of the Spark? Uh, um, that's tough. I feel like the set's pretty well evened out, where there isn't necessarily like one like Hydroid racist card. Um, I like obviously Chandra and Sarkin a lot. I'm obviously playing them. Nickel Bolas is really good. I think it's really good. Yeah. I think the problem with Nickel Bolas is like finding the right shell around it, but like when that card's in play, oh my god. It's even more demoralizing than Teferi or whatever, or Vivian, because you're like also draining their resources from their hand or play, and like it's just really, really good. I played a lot of Grixis decks uh, on Arena over the week. Um, so the power level on that card is huge. Yep. It needs to have a shell around it because it's so restrictive. Um, that's all I got. No one's that's found something. the shell yet. I don't, I don't think. Yeah. And I don't think people are huge on the on ferry. I don't think the ferry is like that good. I think it's more like good in a lot of matches and like kind of mediocre in others. Maybe I'm wrong. You can quote me on it now. I'm on the record. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Nothing really jumps out into the sense of the Red Planeswalkers. Okay. The, answers, the answers are varied. There's yeah. some people who are really big fans of the ferry and think it's like far and away the best card. Yeah, I've heard that from a number of people. Like, I feel like you have to say that, you have to say, like, sideboard card, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. I can't figure it out. I mean, it's looked good on camera a couple times. It's looked better than I expected. Yeah. The, you know, draw phase, draw phase, um, thought, thought eraser, eraser yeah, or, you know, instant, instant speed, yeah. uh, enter the God Eternals. Like, okay, so, that's, yeah. like, pretty good. More importantly, Ross, are you oh. winning? Oh. No? I played against two midrange decks, and my deck can't beat other midrange decks. You got Hobbs real good. Yeah, I screwed up that game one. You did. We watched it. I got to watch it. I mean, the, sloppy, personally. the sloppiness that you saw like, was irrelevant. It was early in the game when I took the spell pierce off a thief when I was really far ahead instead of taking the fairy. Yes. I had stuff to do, so I was like, oh, the spell pierce is chemistry this weekend, draw back into it. And then I drew stuff that like incentivized me to tap out, so the spell pierce was dead. And then I drew some lands, and then he killed all my stuff. And I was like, man, I wish this was a fairy. <laughs> I saw your spell pierce actually. Yeah. I was watching him. Then I tried to cast it when he had baby Teferi. That was his, yep. That, that's yeah. what I saw. And like, it was always pointing and it was like, is yes. it double speak? Is the, yeah. the, the thing? Yeah. yeah. Was it on camera when I chump attacked with the thief into an angel of grace? I oh, yeah. Was there? Oh, yeah. That was on the. Oh, you knew it was there? Yeah. I oh, I no. <laughs> no. Dude. 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 <laughs> we didn't know you knew it was there. Stayed out a little too late. All right. All right. Well, yeah. you don't deserve to win then. Uh, Ross and Jim are going to go play their matches right now. Yep. See ya. Later, Me and Jim, I think, honestly, we could we could talk about magic forever. That was 
20 plus minutes of us just hanging out and doing our thing and looking forward to the new PTQ system. I've got two to play in next week here in Washington that I'm actually really looking forward to playing in. Have no idea how I'll do, but um, I've weirdly always excelled in those tournaments. I think I've won 14 PTQs between uh, real life and and Magic Online. So, you know, what's a 15th or whatever the large number is? It'd be cool. So looking forward to it. One in Tacoma and one in Spokane. Um, bit of a drive there Sunday morning uh, from Bellevue to Spokane, like three and a half, four hours maybe. Maybe I should drive the night before. Who knows? Either way, I'm rambling. Um, Stitcher, SoundCloud, podcast app, iTunes, Spotify is where you can find the pod. Patreon.com slash the Cedric, Gay, Cedric Phillips podcast. Pardon me. Uh, tomorrow, that's the fun one. It's a little more Jim and it's Ross and uh, they're playing Jin. And I think you'll find it as amusing as I did. See you tomorrow.